coming coming to Czech Republic and brewing beer here are kind of two different stories. You know, I I moved to Czech Republic with my wife that I met in California. Mm-hmm. You met at a beer festival. So when you're an employee, you have everything. You just go into work and you go to the brew house. You do all your stuff. But then when you're the owner, you have to have everything. You are one of the first brewers in the country to brew only to fermented beers. Why did you choose this path and not the usual lager path like everyone else did? I only have made the you know variance between 15 to 20 customers and probably 10 of them say I don't give them enough beer Hello everyone, welcome to Beer Celebrities or Osobnosti Piva in Czech. Uh, this is a new episode with me, Honza Grmela, and my guest today is Chris, the owner and the brewer of Pivoros Huzák. Hi Chris. Hi. So, uh, could you describe your American brewing history because you were a brewer before you get to Czech, so just a short version of what you've done or what you've been doing in the US before you came to Czech. <laughs> I, I originally started off as a home brewer, like, like a lot of brewers. I started when I was 17 and now that's about uh, 31 years. Wow. <laughs> Since starting uh, just doing you know, home brewing, a lot of experimentation on my own and I don't know how long now, uh, maybe five or ten years, somewhere <laughs> big gap. I, I started working a bit with the Hoppy Brewing Company in California. Uh, they were in the beginning uh, a contract brewer, but they were based out of uh, San Jose and I lived a little bit north of San Jose. And I was actually originally doing IT work for them. Oh, <laughs> start started with IT work. So another IT guy started as uh, doing computers and finished doing brewing, right? But, but it was uh, kind of my my foot in the door into the brewer, you know, brewing world. So I started doing website and other miscellaneous IT tasks until some years later we eventually got a brewery, and I was able to work alongside the. Uh, They're the full-time brewer. I was still, you know, working part-time, so I had uh, several years of uh, work working in a uh, full-scale you know, brewery. From you say, from every step of the process, I got a lot of you know real experience at a brewery, just not working in carboys at home or something. Because mm-hmm. it's I always tell people that home brewing is just like you know big brewing, but there's still there's still a few tricks you have to know to. To do it on a bigger scale. That's right. That's right. So you were at the Hopi Brewing and doing various uh, roles, or you just started as a brewer there, or what you were doing at the start after you finished the IT job? Well, uh, I that never <laughs> that never ended. I never <laughs> uh, at one point the brewer did leave, but a lot of us kind of stepped in and took. We didn't. I wasn't working full time, so I couldn't do it all the time. But uh, you know, at that point. Say I was brewing kind of in you know every you know step. I know people say, oh, when I when I when somebody says they're a brewer to me, they do everything. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, are you a cellarman? You're this. And it's like, no, a brewer, brewer does oh, yeah. is managing the keg, filling the bottle, maintaining the beer. So when we you know, when I was doing it, it was for every part of the process, and it was just a I don't know like a co co brewer with some right. of the other guys. So, how long have you been in the Hoppy Brewing Company before you came to Czech? It was a while, but you know, on the brewing side, just a you know, couple, couple years, I'd say, no longer being a professional IT groupie guy working beer festivals. <laughs> I see things, but uh, not not on. Long time, but uh, long enough to you know gain enough experience mm-hmm. to know how everything you know works. I could have 
I could say, you know, if I had to, I could have brewed something, you know, from beginning to end, understand, understood, you know, all the, the facets of the, the brewing process. So, uh, how is it possible uh, for an American brewer to come to Czech, to the country where everyone thinks that they understand beer and they can brew anything, basically, because it's a beer nation, and uh, start brewing beer here? How hard is it? Well, I just, you know, originally it was never my intent to, you know, well, <laughs> here's a lot of these, you know, coming, coming to the Czech Republic and brewing beer here are kind of two different stories. You know, I, I moved to Czech Republic with my wife that I met in California. Mm -hmm. We met at a beer festival. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and... I, you know, through this whole process, even working at a hoppy brewing company, I still kept my uh, full full time job doing compu computer work. And when I moved, you know, long story, the moment you know finally moved, you know, here, I was continually doing my IT work and just uh, stopped hoppy hoppy brewing company work. I did IT work again because mm -hmm. I could do it remotely, and just did. Home, home brewery in the Czech Republic, and I got kind of uh, involved with the local brewing brewing scene uh, through that. I I forget how I found out uh, about Jihad, the uh, Prague International Home Brewer. Yeah, I can remember that we met once in uh, Slunce Vesple, mm -hmm. and you had some smoked Kazbek beer, maybe. Seven years ago, something like that is possible. Even further now, the brewery is almost eight years old. Oh, come <laughs> on, <laughs> getting older. <laughs> uh, but uh, I found out you know, Honza Kotchka was running the event, and I had a beer, and I went and you know, submitted in the contest. I kind of, I, don't know, I felt kind of bad. I just went to Prague, uh -huh. and then I like ran off. I didn't wait around for the judge, you know, shows that there was something going on. I forget. Then, as I was coming home, I forget if it was Hansa or I met Evan Evan Rail. Some, some it must have been Hansa, but anyhow, he he called and said, "Hey, you know, you won for your category, and you won for the whole the <laughs> the grand, you know, whatever the top." Prize for the best best beer of the show, best best of show. Uh, and I was like, oh, cool. And I was like, I didn't have the consideration to even stay, stay around for you know the event, but I didn't know I had something going on. So anyhow, it kind of you know getting involved in that, and you go to beer festivals, you meet people, and I went to some award show. Um, I was talking with a group of people. I was like, "Oh, you you should have a brewery." <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know, after some beers, like, you know, so it kind of started, started, you know, seeded the idea that maybe it's something they can do. And what, why is it rules? Because it's completely, you know, agree to me. Why? How is it possible for an American to come to check and choose rules as the place to live? But well, we're going going back again to just you know, how how we got to her and when I when I met my wife we had our beers a festival fell in love got married Czech Republic and actually we moved we lived in California we just got married oh. here uh, at Zamek proposal for my wife's dream that did in marriage and cool so she had her and we moved back to California for a while. And uh, so at some point, we were dreaming one night, like, oh, maybe, you know, we can get something in the Czech Republic and we were online. And I almost want to say it's like the first place that came up on, on the computer <laughs> was like somebody was selling the property in you know, Zush. And they're like, look, and like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and it wasn't too far from my wife's town in Rakasani. Uh -huh. And they, you know, said, oh, you know, this is... You know, nice, nice, nice. It is nice, yeah. Nice. And you know, they came and checked it out, and they said, "Oh, it looks, looks nice." And when we came to visit, we bought basically just the land. So it was kind of just this internet purchase that we did in mm -hmm. California, and uh, that happened to be. A, I think it was just because <laughs> it was 
what what was on the first maybe because it was close to the closest piece of land next to Rakasani that showed up on their internet search. So some chance, I guess. <laughs> so your uh, life till you got here is basically just a series of coincidences. Yeah, the, we didn't go. Oh, I think Zush might be a really good beer <laughs> town. You know, it just it just happened. So we're here. That's nice. And um, I I do know that you're not a full time brewer. So uh, or or are you full time brewer right now? No, I am. For when we when I started, I was still doing the work for my company in California. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of part time, and I slowly. Added on more and more work on the brewery in about, let's say, about three years ago. Oh, well, it doesn't really count with COVID. It's like a year and a half ago that took away a year and a half of um, or something of our yeah. lives. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's been almost three three years, I think. Now, I've been doing it full full time. Mm-hmm. So it's what I do supports the family for the most part. Um, It's uh, it's nice. Um, I just want to know. Um, so, did you have the help of your wife to start it all up, or uh, you were coming to the offices and saying, "Hey, custom officers, I want to launch a brewery. I don't know anything about the Czech law, but yeah, I like brewing beer, and I think I could be good at it." My wife was extremely helpful, and a lot of you know different people in the brewing community were helpful to say, "Go do this." I mean, sorry, you know, see what one's a cops guy said, "Oh, you need to go. Get, you need a brewing license in the Czech Republic." And oh, so I had to go and you know submit my my paperwork to say I had experience in the U.S. You know, the brewing license, and we talked to. Um, Martin Matushka, mm-hmm. and he actually said, you know, like here, you know, he kind of, you should do this, this, and this, and that, and he kind of let it on. And we also then got a lot of help from Joseph uh, Kessel, from uh, Mr. Uh, beer Factory. Said, yeah, right. Now, you know, Joe's Garage Beer Factory, he has his fingers in lots of lots of stuff. <laughs> he so <does. laughs> he he ultimately. Help you know with all the technology that's in the brewery, but uh, they helped out a lot. But my wife helped bring it all together. There would be no way to do it uh, without her, without her help. How long did it take? Because I know that uh, sometimes launching a brewery is more more problem of paperwork than mm-hmm. the actual construction. Mm-hmm. Say it went pretty straightforward. The good thing with uh, Sonia, and my wife, is she's very organized, and all the officials like that. She'll come in with her folders, yeah, have it all laid out. Here it is, here it is, and I think the uh, officials really respect that you respect what they do, and, mm-hmm. and they like okay everything. So for the most part, it was like actually really straightforward. You know, it was just the time to get. Yeah, the building we have was a new, new building. The crew house and everything was you know, one after the other. Mm-hmm. And we get all the the building inspection, the health inspection, fire inspection was all very well lined up. So yeah, thank you. That uh, you know, worked out pretty good. I know I've I've heard uh, horror stories of other people who have everything done and they're waiting for that last stamp. Yeah, where yeah. where is your left <laughs> car? It's, and it's a big problem when you don't have a proper left car, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and that's, so, uh, how long was it? it was about a year or, or longer or quicker? Even? I mean, if you say from breaking ground, you know, I want to say like a year, year and a half, maybe. Because uh, I mean, it started in winter and had to be about a mm-hmm. year, year and a half. So it was pretty. Straightforward. That's right. Everybody, I think even the officials were really supportive. I think they thought it was kind of cool. It's like uh, <laughs> they can't believe that I was doing it. You know, when we I'm just thinking I'm getting the brewing license, the people at the office are like, really? <laughs> <laughs> They've never done it before. In uh, in Belovitsa, is our they take care of all the public paperwork for us. And so people, some people thought it was kind of cool to be a part of the process and just oh, yeah. be along. They weren't a uh, 
a barrier. So it might have been a, a, an advantage that you're American. Maybe, yeah, because it's like <laughs> something different, you know. Who would expect this guy to do it? So good luck. Could you mention what was the biggest obstacle in launching a brewery? Hmm. Because you've seen it from the other side as an employee, and then you own one. How different is that? It's really kind of different. When you're an employee, you have everything. You just go into work and you go to the brew house, you do all your stuff. But then when you're the owner, you have to have everything, you know. Crystal was good at getting a lot of stuff, but there was other things you needed and to fill in, you know, certain pieces of the process. Like, oh, I don't have this one. <laughs> I need this piece. I need this thing to to make it work right. And uh, sometimes you miss out on the details. I mean, the the good I guess the good thing about doing it part time to start with, it wasn't like I had to, you know. Get, me, get, get it going full time right away. Yeah, it was kind of a gradual process that you know I still I really you know was working you know full time and almost mostly brewing on weekends until I got it kind of up. So it gave me a lot of time to uh, kind of learn you know, some of the issues without panicking too much. So that was probably a good thing. Otherwise, I could imagine to be a lot more you know, freaking you know, freaking out a bit. But, yeah. No, it took a while to to get everything together, you know, for a, a brewery that will operate, you know, full, you know, full time for me. You know, the I think I had less than half the equipment I have now when I started, and I had to gradually build it up to you know, to get it to the right right level. Mm -hmm. You know, between things I needed and just things I couldn't afford to start with, I didn't have. Refrigerator. I didn't have all the tanks. I didn't have a lot of stuff. And I was like, okay, we can figure out how to do <laughs> just do this for now. Yeah. You know, and we'll get better equipment as we go along. That's a good approach to still have the main job that uh, you know gives you the money and uh, have the brewing as a as a commercial hobby. <laughs> that's that's a good thing. Well, if that's I know it's not something everybody can do <laughs> but I mean that's kind of when I think about it that's how they work start it's small but start very very small and build it up into something it's it's a fully you know, functional for what we need mm -hmm. and that's I think kind of where I'm at I've kind of got the brewery to the capacity that I want or want to deal with How, how much beer do you brew currently a year? It's a, if we subtract the COVID mm -hmm. stuff, and... uh, it's approximately 350 hectoliters. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, you know, that that much, but uh, it, you know, with all the different processes, I do, you know, the cook, gagging, cleaning, deliveries, and everything. So. Yeah, that all manage myself. It's actually a lot of, a lot of stuff to do. That's that's good. Um, one thing I was really wondering is uh, how did you approach the sales side? Because uh, it's one one thing is to brew the beer and sell it. You know, the American style beers at the time, eight years ago. That's something. How did you approach this this problem? Well, the cool thing about starting eight years ago. Is there weren't many players in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what did you have? Kotsa, Matuska, Lucky Bastard came along, <laughs> and some other, you know, not too many breweries that did the beer. And for the amount of breweries there were, there was enough interest, I think, to people to seek out the breweries that, that made it. I, uh, soon after I opened, I did Scenes of the Spa. At the the beer festival in Pilsen that just happened last week, uh, and you know, right after I had a lot of people come to you know, help me get your beer, mm -hmm. and working, you know, only having partial production, it wasn't that much beer beer to sell, so it kind of really worked to my advantage to be, I'd say, kind of a 
one of the more early <laughs> That's <laughs> we won't, we won't go into the details of what that means. But, <laughs> no. So it. So what? What do you think it means? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, no, that's always a, a, a tough. In the local content, the context, I mean. Uh, you know, I think a lot of when people think craft brewery, they think it's you know uh, the more creative beers, usually ales, IPAs, now sours, naipas, and whatever. And they're, you know, done by a brewery that's, uh, you know, smaller brewery, maybe under 10,000 hectares, depending on how it is, uh, that, you know, makes the beer with, you know, love and care and all that stuff. Okay, right. So, I mean, it's, it's not, uh, some, you know, macro brewery you can't really you know, mm -hmm. see the people behind it it's uh, somebody you can touch you know, yeah right? so yeah. There, there's like a lot of meanings behind <laughs> and that's what you know there's always been the difficulty trying to define it in the u.s the craft brewers association has spent their whole time existing trying to define it and they change it every year <laughs> to make it better suit them and that it, uh, it's tough you kind of have to have a I don't know a feeling for what craft beer is because I'll say this and then you'll say something else yeah and then it's hard to write down right they'll say well it has to be this size it has to be this type of beer and this but there's kind of I think a lot of people kind of get the gen general sense of what it is and I think people mostly accepted that it's like a pale ale's IPA mm -hmm. reduced and at the time there just wasn't much around you know, from at least from local breweries, even uh, imports were rare. I think the, the only place I could find interesting beer was at Hypernova. Uh, uh, they had like a Primator. Uh, uh -huh. They had their English, was English pale ale. English pale ale, right? Their stout and the their the half of ice and that mm -hmm. was, I mean that was really what you could you know. Find, at least around you know Pils Pilsen region, mm -hmm. and you know it wasn't I think much better in Prague. They might have gotten better imports. Yeah, you have to go to Pilsen's money to at the time mm -hmm. to buy something. So um, you just uh, it was okay for you to just sit here, brew the beer, and the customers just came to you, or you were <laughs> during the pops and saying, hey, I got this keg, you want to try it out? I'm, I want to say it's exactly like that, but a lot of, you know, a lot of people came to me. Right now, I only have maybe, you know, variance between 15 to 20 customers. And probably 10 of them say, I don't give them enough beer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, it doesn't take take much to, to sell it even, even now. So even you know, back then, and I mean, another... I was just thinking, uh, uh, it was like soon after Sun uh, I had a visit from Cool Deep Lesk and Zee Chossi. Those guys uh, were, we did a lot of cooperating together mm -hmm. in beer and they you know, ended up creating Bad Flash. We did some of the bad, really bad Flash beers together. So that, that, that helped, you know, a lot give me, you know, uh, visibility in Prague because they, we do the beers together and they always have it there and eventually I was too small for them <laughs> <laughs> and you know they they have uh, you know soon or I think right now they have their, their brewery that's going to kick off with that fresh brewery yeah I heard of it so that I mean that was another big you know help in the early days to help get visibility because they they're really kind of pushing along as well so you're basically, no, sorry, I don't have enough beer for you. Just call someone else? Sort of. No, I usually have my offers. I I try to, I'm trying to get more beer to Pilsen. I kind of like to kind of keep it, you know, for local products. It seems bad in my mind that you can only get the beer in Prague or something. So I have people that I offer to in Pilsen and, you know, some, it's kind of half and half. You know, I contact people and people contact me and can I get beer this week? And I also, yeah, part of it is I, I now I do Prague distribution with uh, Pivovar Raven. Mm -hmm. 
So people, they so they know if they're ordering something from Raven, they'll say, well, I'll order something from Chris, or they have, I, the only way I know is if they contact me if they want something, so it kind of works both ways. Um, do you plan on expanding your brewery even bigger, or just it fits you as it is, and you don't want to do anything about that? Right now, it fits me the way it is. Uh, I, you know, I, it makes enough to be sustainable, mm -hmm. and anything more would require more help. And if I get more help, then I have to make more beer and get more equipment and so on, and so on. It, uh, you know, I, there's no easy uh, way to extend besides and maybe looking to maybe you know outsource some of different types of beers at different places but that's a, a different project i see that's for another time <laughs> <laughs> um what are your plans for uh current time and uh, for the near future it's something you are thinking like in five to ten years you have some long-term plans Apart from uh, the contract beers that you may just mentioned, mm, it's still you know there's still a lot to kind of stabilize in the process. You know, once I did go full time, you know, a year later, then we had COVID and it kind of disrupted stabilizing how I do things. Where we made you know three years ago, we also opened up the ter the beer terrace, and I'm trying to figure out what's the best balance of you know, having you know, this or how much beer I make. I don't know. I, so I, it's still work in progress? I, I, yeah, I'm still trying to balance it out because I think, I think I have the right thing now for the most part. And anything on top of that is kind of icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see, I see. But uh, I want to have a, I want to stable, stabilize what I have before I start, you know, going and you know, trying to like some new stuff because I know there's better ways to do it uh, by uh, trying to you know, clean up you know things say in the brewing process and you know there's lots of things to be fine you know, never uh, be I don't know too comfortable mm -hmm. with with theory otherwise uh, something goes wrong. That, that's right. You cannot be comfortable. So, and um, if you just were to mention one thing, you know, one one thing to dream to to have or to make in like five years, uh, it's I don't know. Everybody, everybody seems to be doing it now. So, I was looking at uh, doing wild beers and other interesting things to put some open open bats out here, some little. Mm -hmm little houses to catch the bugs and stuff and having a oh, my neck <laughs> I hurt my neck yesterday you have to stop working in the brewery definitely <laughs> uh, and the hill possibly to put like a little cellar and have a place for barrels and things mm. but that's that's just uh, I guess icing on the cake you know just dream, dream stuff you were one of the first brewers in the country to brew only to fermented beers. Why did you choose this path and not the usual lager path like everyone else did? I never brewed lagers. <laughs> so that was the reason? <laughs> that simple? Why? I mean, <laughs> the, the reason people were interested, I said, Crisco have a brewery is because they said you should be doing these pale ale. IPAs and things like that, and say, oh Chris, you know, it'd be really good if you did some more lagers, because that's the one thing Czech Republic doesn't have enough of, more, more lagers. <laughs> uh, so, there there was really no, I, I mean, you can say there's really no reason to do lagers. There's, even at the time, there were still lots of, you know, small city breweries that did lagers, and that wasn't my specialty at all. So and you were not afraid of uh, you know not being able to sell it? If the people say I just want to drink my pilsner and I don't care about any lager or any ales at all. Well, just just from you know like just seeing the beer festivals and you know I 
went into a couple before I, I started it up and just seeing people's interest in it and understanding that, you know, even in the U.S. market, this type of beer is made, maybe it's more, but, you know, you say it's still 10% of the bigger market next to uh, Budweiser and Miller and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, you'll find somebody who like it, I guess. You'll find one out of a hundred and that's fine. How do you see the differences among Czech and American market in terms of craft beer? <clears throat> uh, I still haven't thought that out. But I'd say, you know, now, nowadays, uh, to me, and I haven't been back to the US in I mean, three years at least to really get hands on feel for it, I'd say a lot of it's really, it's really similar. I mean, like when you say that such a small percentage of people drink craft beer, you know, pails, you know, like, yeah, it's very true in the U.S. People think, oh, no, they all drink, you know, these pale ales and interesting beers, but that's just what gets a lot of publicity. People will hear just about the, the interesting beers, but you'll mostly find pubs that have, you know, the, the Amer American lager, the light beer, and... You know, there's a lot of a lot of people, you know, a lot of you know breweries constantly popping up in the U.S. Same in the Czech Republic, and they're all trying to make these beers. Everybody's trying to do something more and more interesting. You know, people say, "Oh, everybody's copying the U.S." But now the U.S. wants to have now they want loggers and pilsners, so everybody's copying everybody. I think it's kind of I don't know. It's it's very similar in my mind right now. If you you know asked me eight years ago, you know, I'd say it's very very different. It's a, it's a much smaller market here, and to have so many breweries would be such a would be a big risk. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't work out. But now, I don't think there's plenty of room for more of these types of breweries. Because you know, people are you know the market is pretty good, and it keeps on expanding. It's always it's always kind of fun to see out in in zoom shots here in you know, Pils in Pilsner country, just people who go, hmm, that's not bad, you know. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, I never thought I'd like an ale, and usually I have something from kind of a really easy drinking ale to you know some naipas, and that's I think that's always the fun part when you see somebody you think oh that person's just gonna spit that out, and they have a naipa, and they go. So okay, another slowly changing so, the Dwanda drinkers to air drinkers, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just you know slowly exposing people to it, and if they come here, they're kind of forced to. There's no, no option. <laughs> yeah, that's a great option to not have an option. <laughs> if you were a beer, what kind of beer would you be? What what type or where we can find you in a pub or in a beer shop? <laughs> what type of beer would I be? Yeah. I always like to relate myself to uh, kind of a hoppy uh, pale ale. I always think of Sierra Nevada. That's my my go-to beer. If I had to be a beer, I guess I'd like to be a, a Sierra Nevada pale ale. Everyone, this was uh, Chris from breweries called Zvuzak in Zvuz, uh, near Pilsen. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Or I did come here. Oh, yeah. So thank you for coming. To yeah, your show. <laughs> thank you for coming here. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. This was uh, personal deeds of beer or beer celebrities or uh, Piva. Please follow us on social media, YouTube, and also subscribe, like, and drink a lot of beer. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, do you see something like? Um, when the top fermented beers, the American style beers and the English style beers came to check, everyone was like, wow, that's great, that's something new and uh, something that we haven't had before. Uh, do you see something like that coming to the US from, from Czech? You know, the uh, up uprising of a Czech lager in the American craft breweries? It, it's a. Yeah, it's a kind of. A, it's a funny thing because uh, when the craft beer scene started in the US, they. We're really trying to break away from 
you know, the Miller bug, the ballroom, and they want to differentiate themselves from that. So they, you know, the definition of craft beer almost was based, almost said no law, kind of like light lagers yeah. in a way. It was like, oh, a law, I think back then they, if they said you made lagers, you wouldn't be craft beer, but it was so, no, no lagers are going to do these, you know, thick, rich beers like this and that. And now, you know, they're changing, you know, changing their story as it comes around that people are starting to appreciate, you know, some of these, you know, you know these are just, you know, nice, crisp, clean beers, uh, besides, you know, all these beers with too many hops and lots of fruit and that. So I think that you know, people are trying to appreciate, you know, more the so German bill, Czech bills and those, you know, different styles now. It's nice to see, because I, I would, I remember a little story, I went, oh, was it great beer? Or one of the sites they had, like a place where you could go on the message board and you could set up trades. Mm -hmm. I was going to set, I was going back to the U.S. I was going to get a bunch of beers from, from Dutchrani, from, uh, Oh man, um, Modri, Modri, yes, Modra Hvezda, Modra Hvezda, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and I thought actually they make really good uh, uh, lagers, you know, especially the strong lagers, I think it's the seven, uh, seven to degree and stuff, and I got in there, I was like, oh, I have all, I can get all these cool lagers from here and there, and I wrote on the board, and everybody's like, uh, log, you know, this is, you know, I, eight years, you know, eight, Ten years ago or something, everybody just we wrote back. It's like, oh, maybe you can go find a bottle store and get some Cantillon or this or that. <laughs> Those loggers won't do very well, and and people just were really down on it. I was like, oh, you know, you won't get these anywhere else. They only you can only get them in PT, you get them fresh, and it's such a you know and these are the beer professionals like buying back, and now to see them. Yeah, you know, nowadays going. Oh, we want to have a, a lager. Those are some of the best, you know, best beers now. Those are the, the new hip thing to have. It's kind of ironic or funny just to see how it's kind of turned around. That people, I finally found that you know these are good good beers to have. And that was it always bugs me. I have that note still in my messages somewhere. <laughs> <laughs>